Large-ish premium SUVs are a common sight on UK roads, and there's good reasons for this. They've got a premium badge, off-roading looks, and they're big enough to fit the whole family in without busting your budget or you needing to widen your driveway to fit them in. And this is Mercedes version, the GLC. But the popularity of this type of car means lots of brands want a piece of the action and the Mercedes GLC faces competition from the likes of the BMW X3, Audi Q5, Lexus NX, Jaguar E-Pace and Land Rover Discovery Sport to name just a few. So can it do enough to stand out from the crowd? Let's find out. But before we do that, please take a moment to subscribe to the Car Gurus UK YouTube channel. Remember to tap the bell icon too, that way you'll catch all of our latest videos. We've got the plug-in hybrid 300e petrol here. You can also get a plug-in diesel hybrid and regular four-cylinder petrol and diesel engines that are not hybrid. If you fancy a bit more get up and go, you can opt for the sporty AMG models. There's the V6 powered GLC 43, which costs about the same as this car, or there's the twin turbo V8 GLC 63S. That's got a fire breathing 510 horsepower, but then again, it costs more than 90,000 pounds. This car costs a much more manageable 57,000 pounds, which isn't peanuts, but it is in top spec. So what do you get for your money? Well, for starters, the design is quite restrained, which we think is quite classy. And for the AMG Line Premium Plus model that this car is, you get sporty 20 inch alloy wheels and a running board, but it doesn't go over the top. That sensible thing continues here with the boot because on non-hybrid models, you get 550 litres of space, which is good, but not class leading. However, with the hybrid cars, space is stolen to accommodate the batteries and therefore that space drops down to 395 litres. Rather than dropping down in a 60-40 split, the rear seats can be folded down in a 40-20-40 configuration, which is very useful. It only takes the touch of a button to drop the seats down too. It's a bit of a shame you can't slide or recline the rear seats though. The decent sized door pockets are a bonus too. But even though you can't adjust these rear seats, they are still pretty comfortable. There's not an awful lot of leg room and this large transmission tunnel is likely to annoy middle passengers. You'll certainly be comfortable up front. There is plenty of adjustment in the seats and the steering wheel. So you should be able to get a comfortable driving position. And these leather seats look and feel as if they'll last forever. While the dashboard of the GLC is pretty smart looking, it isn't as flashy as some Mercedes interiors, including the cheaper Mercedes A-Class. But depending on your taste, that might not be a bad thing. This vast expanse of dark wood trim is gorgeous. It feels very organic. Although note that lower spec cars just get piano black plastic here. Considering the only option this car has is metallic paint, it's really well equipped. True enough, this is the top spec AMG Line Premium Plus model, but even the basic AMG Line comes with LED headlights, a reversing camera, three zone climate control, and there's also this swish looking 10.25 inch touchscreen media system with DAB radio and integrated sat nav. Step up to AMG Line Premium and you get 64 color ambient lighting, this very swish 12 inch driver's display, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, wireless phone charging and an augmented reality navigation, which is very neat. On top of all of that, top spec AMG Line Premium Plus brings a panoramic sunroof, electric adjustment for the front seats and steering column, and a 590 watt Burmester sound system. All models come with MBUX voice assistant, which means you can do things like this. Hey Mercedes. How may I help you? I'm too hot. Temperature on the driver's side set to minimum. Very impressive and also rather useful because although the infotainment system is pretty cool, it can be a little bit fiddly to use. Keep it in EV mode and you should be able to travel 31 miles on electric power alone. That's not bad, but the diesel version of the bigger GLE can travel up to 66 miles on electric power alone. 
getting a full charge into the 13.5 kilowatt hour battery pack will take two hours and 45 minutes from a seven kilowatt wall charger and around seven and a half hours from a domestic three pin socket. Provided you keep it charged up whenever possible, some seriously impressive MPG figures are possible. Officially, that means 117 miles per gallon. But how much you get depends on how much you have to lean on the electric motor. Talking of electric power, it can take you up to motorway speeds without using the petrol engine. You just have to be gentle though. If you accelerate hard like this, the petrol engine cuts in. If you do want to enjoy the performance that that petrol engine and electric motor has to offer, the GLC will play along on a twisty road. There's plenty of grip to lean on in the corners and it always feels stable. The steering is light and accurate, but it's just not particularly engaging to drive. So it does tend to feel happier cruising rather than driving particularly briskly, which is not a bad thing if you want to keep that fuel economy up. One thing that will really irritate company car drivers is the CO2 emissions figure of 62 grams per kilometre means it doesn't sit in the most tax efficient bracket, which is a bit of an issue for a car like this. That said, there's still a lot to like about the GLC. It's inoffensively attractive, it's packed full of equipment, and there's the lure of that badge. For many buyers, it's that three-pointed star in the nose that will really swing it for them. And that is why there is a song about owning a Mercedes-Benz. But what do you reckon? Do you think the GLC is outstandingly good or does it fail to stand out? Let us know in the comments and if you're considering buying a used example or indeed any car, head to cargurus.co.uk to find loads of great deals from top rated dealers.